there and welcome. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about post-test training. Now, subjects come up, although I think about it a lot, because a few people have said to me recently they've got friends who ride bikes and they've been out for a ride with them and they're a little bit concerned. Not because they're mad, but because they're doing really stupid things, but they just seem to completely lack confidence and knowledge of how to ride a motorcycle. And a lot of these people, they're just very reluctant to take any further training. And over the years, I've heard many reasons why people can't or won't take any training. So I thought I'd just discuss a few points with you today, just to see what you think, really. So when we look at motorcyclists, I see sort of very different categories. I see people who go out and just ride in quite a mad way and they're quite reckless and careless and some of them have good knowledge and some of them don't and they're quite happy in their little world and they don't seem to appreciate the risks and we're probably never going to educate those sort of motorcyclists unfortunately then I see motorcyclists who have done further training do invest time and trouble and money in riding a bike to be the best that they can be and then we've got the other category of rider who passed their test maybe recently or maybe many years ago and has a had a long break has got back on a bike and they're still trying to find their way with riding but actually it's not working that well and out of that category we'll have people that are almost oblivious to the fact that they're not where they need to be and they're quite happy in their own little world getting things not really right and then there's that category of people who absolutely know that they're not where they should be think maybe that with time experience we'll sort it all out and everything will come good so as motorcyclists with all the training that we've had in recent times in recent years things have improved a lot since my day we know we're vulnerable road users we know that on average in the UK over 300 motorcyclists are killed every year and we know that reported collisions injury collisions in motorcycles are probably in the region of 19 plus thousand incidents casualties every year as well and that's a horrendous number fortunately as motorcyclists we probably don't think too much about that when we're actually riding or perhaps we wouldn't ride at all but we do need to have an awareness that we need to be good at what we do some students have said to me in the past is it inevitable that i'm going to have a collision no i don't believe it is inevitable I do believe you can do a lot to protect yourself and help yourself. So one of the first questions that often gets asked when we talk about post-test training certainly is why? Why do I need to have passed my test? Isn't that enough? No it isn't quite frankly. Passing your test doesn't go to show a lot. Now unfortunately a lot of people their only goal is getting the license and they want to get it as quickly and as cheaply as possible. And once they've got that license, they're not interested in anything else, that's it. It's mission accomplished. Now, whilst there is a national standard for rider and driver training in the UK now, the way that you get that taught to you is likely to vary to some degree. As instructors, we do have a limited amount of time if you like to train people to ride a bike before they're presented for test now it's a very fine balance between saying to someone you've got a four day or a five day training course it's going to cost you x amount of pounds and then we'll present you for test and if i said to someone yeah i'll take you for your license you're going to do three weeks training it's going to cost you three thousand pounds i go i'm not paying that i'm not doing that and they go somewhere else Instructors cannot teach you everything you need to know in a short space of time. Now it may be that your standard is whatever level you achieve, could be variable, and you may have an easy or a lucky test. Who knows? And then of course once you've got that license you're done. So the test standard isn't even that high to be honest, it's, it's not a high bar to achieve. I know for some people it seems really difficult to pass that test sometimes, but it isn't a high standard and the knowledge that you may have 
and you present for test is not necessarily going to be very high. I know for a fact that many students who I've seen post-test had no clue, even though they had a full licence, about subjects such as limit point analysis for bends, their braking was poor, they didn't know about or understand counter steering, they've, they've never even been trained to do overtaking. And they're just a few of the things. So the amount of issues that we see that are not trained at all or trained to a good level of competence this goes to show us why test standard is not good enough so very often you know you're talking to motorcyclists they will happily spend 500 plus pounds on a slip-on exhaust pipe thousand pound for a full exhaust system 200 pound for a screen whatever it might be and then you say to someone, come and do a training course, it'll cost you 400 quid. And they'll go, oh no, 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 it's far too expensive. It's, is it not worth investing in the most important part of your motorcycle? Which is you. So in a way, we're probably more fortunate these days than we have been in the past because we've got a massive amount of resources to look at for post-test motorcycle training. We've got the internet, we've got loads of videos loads of articles on there to read and watch and we've got some good publications to read as well we can buy lots of books on the matter I don't know about you and I sort of read through a lot of this stuff and when I watch a lot of videos and of course I produce videos as well it can be confusing and I always look at it from a perspective of a new or an inexperienced or unconfident rider and I think Okay, so we're looking at all this stuff, but what do I believe? I've watched videos that will absolutely contradict 100% what another one has just said. And if you're inexperienced, you're going to come away thinking, well, what actually should I be doing? I don't know, I don't understand. Or the other danger is you watch the video, read the article, think, okay, I've learnt that, go away, put it into practice, and actually you haven't understood it or you've misinterpreted something and then you then start practicing something doing things wrong and then repeating that over and over again and hard wiring in a bad habit so these things can be counterproductive that's why professional training with a qualified instructor and I'm not trying to drum up as business here at all it's just something to be aware of when you go out with an instructor, an instructor can see when you've got something wrong, that you're not quite getting it, that you're not applying something correctly. And that problem can be nipped in the bud before it's hardwired into a habit. Where I've seen people do CBTs and they've come back two years later to renew a CBT, or where I've seen students who have done an A2 licence pass their test, so they've gone on a proper course, done everything that they should do, They've come back two years later to upgrade for their full A licence to get the unrestricted licence. And they have forgotten so much of what they were taught. Or they can't still put it into practice. And they've very often replaced it with lots of their own bits and pieces that are unhelpful. In some cases wrong, in some cases unsafe. But they've converted those into hardwired habits. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a really good gauge it's a really good indication that once you've passed your test and you've gone away you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing so another big problem is where somebody actually passes their test gets their license and then they go off and they don't buy a bike or if they do they don't ride it and then a few months later they think oh, I'm gonna have a go on that bike now your newfound skills that were okay enough to get you through your test three months ago have now dwindled because you haven't been putting them into practice. You haven't been hard wiring and practicing into a skill. So you've lost loads of it. You've forgotten what your instructor said and now you're going to go out on this machine because you've got a license. But actually, you wouldn't pass your test if you took it now because you've forgotten so much. And that's where you need to go and get some more training. 
So another interesting aspect we maybe need to look at is a thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Now Dunning and Kruger were two psychologists that did some research and they found that many people, in fact we're all predisposed to it in one way or another, is a situation where people believe they know a lot more than they actually do and they will spout off about a particular subject and say how great they are and how knowledgeable they are when in fact they aren't but they don't have an awareness of that fact and of course that's a problem because when you ride a motorcycle if you think you are really good and really know everything and have nothing to learn but in fact you are way off the mark you're at risk and this study also showed that people in this situation have absolutely no ability to take a step back and look at themselves and recognise that lack of knowledge and ability, which is quite frightening. The study also showed, interestingly, that people who were experts or who did know a lot about their subject often underestimated their abilities in that subject. So it's quite the opposite, quite the reverse. But another factor that was quite noticeable as well is that where experts are genuine experts, they sometimes fail to appreciate that a non-expert can't understand or grasp the subject. So as a motorcyclist, we actually have to be quite good at realising our exact level of competence and knowledge. To not do so could put you at risk because when you're operating a machine like this in a very dynamic environment that's safety critical, if your judgment of your knowledge and ability is way higher than it actually is, that does predispose you to risk. So why don't people take post-test training then? Why, why wouldn't you want to be a much better, safer motorcyclist and feel much more confident about your control of the machine? There's lots of reasons to be honest. I've met people, a lot of people over the years and having had discussions with them, it highlights problem. So one of the reasons is time and money. For a lot of people it's fear of making a fool of themselves or the stress and the pressure of the whole thing. For many people learning wasn't a positive experience. It was a negative experience um, maybe through schooling. Didn't find it particularly enjoyable and that still sticks. And for a lot of people, they remember their test training courses and if their instructor wasn't particularly good or particularly nice or the test was very, very stressful for them or they failed a few times, they just don't want to revisit that type of experience. And that's very, very understandable. So for some people who actually have attempted to do post-test training, they found the experience quite negative as well, which is never good. So they found that they didn't have much say in their training and the way things were going to be conducted. Or they were pressurised and, you know, it's something I've heard a lot. It was all about speed, it was all about overtakes and I hated it. I didn't really learn anything because I felt under so much pressure. So I think as instructors, when we deal with training courses for people who've already got licences, it's the same with people who haven't got licences, but particularly we must tailor the way that we train to the wishes of our student but within the boundaries of what we know needs to be taught and in looking at a student's ability identifying those areas that we know need to be addressed so it's a very much a two-way street so it's certainly worth taking some extra training depends what you want but at the end of the day to be a more confident and a safer rider is important. You don't have to be a Ross Gold, you don't have to be an IAM Masters. You just need to get a realistic opinion sometimes on where you actually are with your riding. And those areas that could cause you a problem, it's always nice just to get them addressed, to get them sorted. You know, I've known people who've been riding for years. They're afraid of bends. They're afraid of riding in the wet. You know, they, lo they love riding a motorcycle, but every time they go out on it, they're all tense. They come back stiff and aching where all the joints and muscles have all been tense. 
you can get so much more out of it if only you can develop and move forward. I've had many students over the years and I've also helped people on online forums over the internet with issues where they've been struggling with their bike. A little bit of advice, a little bit of training, they've come back and gone, not selling the bike now, I love it. It's changed the bike. You know, most bikes are manageable if the techniques that you use are appropriate. It can really open up a whole world to you what bike you ride if you're trained and develop the ability properly. So there's many providers out there that can help you. You know, you can go to the Institute of Advanced Motorists, you can go to Rosper, you can do your advanced courses um, at whatever standard you know you achieve and even if you didn't pass a, a test the tuition uh, what you'll learn will be invaluable you can't take that away from you enhanced rider scheme instructors like myself I mean we're pretty good sometimes the enhanced rider scheme is a DVSA back scheme it's quite flexible although it has got core modules it's got a lot of flexibility to it and there is no test for those of you that really hate tests with a passion and I know there's a lot of you out there don't have to do a test so every time you go out and you ride every time you learn something it's all for you it's all for your benefit you've gained something and most police forces also do bike safe and you know if you go out with those those guys you're gonna pick up some really useful tips and whilst they like not actually put you on a training course. Bike Safe is a real good way of getting a realistic view of your riding and where you could improve and getting some hints and tips prior to maybe coming to see a training provider. Don't just rely on the internet and videos, they're a guide. But we have to make sure that what you're learning, you're learning correctly and you're able to apply it and hardwire it. So good luck in what you choose to do. So, until next time, ride safe as always and take care.